for you. I'm so just so thankful for John 3.16. It's Thanksgiving. We are so thankful for everything that the Lord is doing and has done and continue doing it for us. John 3.16 declares, For God so loved the world that he has given us his only begotten Son, and who shall ever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming to earth for us, for filling us with your love, for bringing the nectar of heaven, refreshment for our soul, who are caught up in the cages and the dungeons of the earth, that you have shined your divine and holy light, uh, breathe in us so we may have life, and life for all eternity. And we give you glory, praises, and honor. Jesus said that he is the bread of life. The Lord declares in John 6, verse 31, he says, I am the bread of life. Be thankful that he is the bread of life. Without nourishment, without water, without food, this flesh, this body cannot stand. Our feet will collapse down to the ground. Our hands cannot uh, raise and be praising him. We cannot praise God without energy. It can cripple Lord. our soul. The world can cripple your soul. But be thankful that Jesus said that he is the bread of life. Thank you, Lord. John 6, 31 declares, Our Father did eat manna in desert, as it is written. His, he gave then bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Very verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Mm. For the bread of God is, is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then Jesus, then said they unto him, Lord, even more give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Awesome. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Jesus Christ means Son of the Living God. In Hebrew and Greek, it means Messiah. Messiah means God's anointed one. Anointing is painted fragrance that attracts the favor of God. It has the yoke destroying power. It destroys every exposure of danger and it catapults a situation into another dimension. It is a dimension of the golden pages of our Heavenly Father as He's seated on the throne. He's seated on the throne and He is turning. In humanity's life for the will of our Heavenly Father. And Lord God Almighty is saying every day, every day He's saying, He's saying, We are in His perfect will. If we learn to only humble ourselves through situations, things, and time, and places that we travel on earth, we come across another human being who wants to steal the presence of God. He wants to block the way. But the merciful God. with 
divine favor from the heart of Adonai, fire that sits on the throne, consuming fire of the Holy Ghost, who is laying the foundation for us, the divine favor of God and holy compassion from the heart of the Father who sits on the throne. Through conversion, he is my heavenly Father. Through conversion that has taken place, he's my heavenly Father, and he is the one that I must bow and humble down to over all situations and things. And I have tears to cry, and if I have eyes, my eyes have been washed by the tears that he has created that can roll over my cheeks and disappear because God said, preserve the tears in the jar, and he blesses us by his divine and holy presence, his appearance that is over and over again in the word of the Almighty that we can read it over and over again. Just open the pages of basic instruction before leaving earth. You'll find him there. And when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus stands tall on those pages. When Jesus stands tall on those pages, all those situations that wanted to just control you, they crumble under the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and they are removed from the path by seconds, minutes, and hour as we are traveling through this tent. Hallelujah. As we live in this body. The Lord said that over, over, and over, and over again. He said, bring everything to the altar of the Almighty. Be thankful that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he who was born in Bethlehem, he is the son of the living God, and he is, his heart desires that we can hide behind his word. Over and over again, we can always hide behind his word. Does he not say that he is the bishop of souls? He is the head, honcho. He's the head. He's the head of all emotion and minds of humanity, east, west, north, and south, all throughout the universe as the earth is spinning, as the moon is going.
started. than running down the hill. Come on. Because you wanna, it, it's hard to run up the hill without Jesus. You gotta catch Amen. on. You have some catching on to do. It's okay. It's okay. Just hold it. Just ask him for his hand. He made these hands. I can always ask for his hand. Can you please hold my hand so I can run up the hill with you? So I can follow you. Follow the word of God. Apply the word of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He brought the nectar of heaven so we can be filled with the word of heaven so he can bring shine. It shines our life. It shines our emotion. It shines our mind where darkness cannot shadow us. Dead word of Satan just cannot have power over right. us because right. you think you only see the word? You only see the word rejection? Do you think that's only the word rejection? There's a dead spirit of rejection is dead spirit, dead word, Satan's word, and is dead. There's dead spirit hiding in the dead word. The That's not the word God will never reject you. And there's another word. Huh. There's a word called betray. You think betray is just the word? Come on. It doesn't mean anything. It's a dead word of Satan. It came from the dead well of Satan and his legions. And that it is a dead spirit hiding in that dead word betray. Yeah. When you look at the word anger, you think anger is just the word, doesn't mean anything, and you can let Satan use the spirit of anger and make it, make it its illegal residence, a soul that belongs to Jesus Christ of Nazareth and son of the living God who went on the cross. And the word of God declares the Hebrew 6, 4, God is saying, Adonai is saying, fire is speaking to us today. Does my son have to go on the cross again? God forbid. So why are you letting the spirit of anger Come use on. you today? That's the dead spirit. That's the dead word of Satan. Are you holding hands with anger? No. Are you holding hands with insult? Are you holding hands with betrayal? Yeah. Are you holding hands oh, with rejection? Are you holding hands uh, with deceit that you can perceive the word of God and you'll be put in the blindness? What are you holding hands with? Or what you like to hold the hands with Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Uh, Remember, he said he's going up the hill. Come on. Your soul will never be cast down. Mm. He's holding your hands. He's spinning the earth by his spirit in three different angles. And he is putting us, us here on earth to process us, to process us, to make us better for himself. Mm. And while we have time here on earth, let's just make it right with our Lord Jesus Christ. Just obey and do what he asked us to do. When nothing, when every spirit, every spirit that was nailed on the cross, today they are doing this to Christians. They are doing this to religious spirits. They are doing it hitchhiking. He says, it says this. He said, hello. He said, would you take me for a ride? Come on. Would you take me for a ride? Would you give me a lift? Whoa. Because they want to ride your emotion. Hey. They want to, those dead spirits want to ride your mind. Whoa. See, and the devil, there are two cops that I'm talking about. There are two wills on earth. There's a natural will and there's a spiritual will. So what devil does from this angle and that angle, he's shooting dots and arrows at you. He wants to fill your When he pours into the mind cup, now mind is part of your soul. Emotion and mind is part of your soul. So he pours from the brain cup. He came from that angle yesterday. He came from that angle the, the other day. And he came from that angle, the past and the junction where I got stuck. And he took me back over there. He had a conversation with me. And he says, remember that place about seven months ago, eight months ago. He remember that place. Uh, Something happened years ago, probably. Something happened 
went under the shower. What about your emotion and mind? How do you wash that? By the watching of the water of the word. How do you wash your eyes? It's okay to cry before God. Yes. It's okay the tears to wash your eyes. It's okay for the word of God to wash your emotion and mind. It's okay to ask our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8.34 declares that Jesus Christ of Nazareth who was born in Bethlehem, the son of the living God today, is seated at the right hand of our heavenly father. And he made a true intercession. And a true, true intercession for yes. you and I. And he says that I am in a city for you. And John 17 and verse 9 declares. Isaiah 14, 12 declares, God said to 